Hey guys, it's Wednesday and um, it's Thursday, January 2nd. Actually, I'm doing this a day late because I'm still trying to figure out how the whole YouTube stuff works. But uh, I've been working on a lot of projects this week, so I just kind of wanted to tell you guys all about them. Um, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is my most recently finished spinning project, which is awesome. And it's this right here. Um, it's actually a single which I don't do very often because it takes a lot of balls on my part because I have this fear that if I spin a single it's just gonna fall apart when somebody starts knitting with it and then all that work will go down the drain but the fun part about doing a single is that you get twice the yardage because you don't have to have it when you ply it so if you have the right yarn and it's down with being spun as a single it actually comes out pretty good so I would say this one's great actually what this is it's merino based it's merino it has BFL wool in it also silk um, mohair and Angelina which is incredible and I've got 2.1 ounces of it which is another reason to do it as a single because it's not a whole lot of yarn what can you do with that so what I did was I spun it as kind of a worsted to bulky weight um, so you can kind of see it's a little bit chunky which I think is going to be really soft and squishy and great on the needles. That's another benefit to spinning it as a single. It stays a little bit springier. Um, and the cool part about doing this one was that that silk content kind of keeps it a little bit stronger. So I worry slightly less about it falling apart. Um, and I didn't have to put as much twist in it. So I also don't have to worry about it leaning quite so hard one direction when you start knitting with it because it still has all of that twist in it. This really doesn't. It's it's very light twist, but it's still pretty strong and it's squishy, which is the best thing about a yarn in my personal opinion. Um, this fiber came from Wooden Spinner. It's Bats from the Belfry and the colorway is Pixie Dust, uh, which is actually pretty fitting in my opinion because it's got a little bit of sparkle in it so super cool super fun I actually picked this one up at the yellow rose fiber fiesta that happens every year in Seguin, Texas I love it I try to go every single year I only missed one year and that was when I was preggers um, because somehow it just seems hard to travel across Texas when you're eight months pregnant and then spend a whole bunch of money on yarn um, so this was from the year before that so not guilty on that front um, and they have a lot of good stuff, a lot of really squishy, beautiful bats, um, great colorways, so yeah. This is what I just finished, and of course I have to get something new on the wheel as soon as I finish one, so what I'm working on right now is some Surrey Alpaca. And if you have not touched Surrey Alpaca, you need to, um, because it's incredible. It's basically like goddess hair. It's amazing and silky smooth and straight and fine. And this is what the bat looks like. This one in particular, it's been blended, it's been carded with uh, bamboo and some pretty red fire star that kind of complements this brown. I don't know if it's coming through really correctly, but it's a beautiful, rich kind of mahogany color and so, so very soft. Um, so I love this and I love spinning from bats too because it's easier for me to measure out for one ply and then another because what I do with my fiber when it comes in bat form is I lay it out flat like this and I tear it out into long little strips um, I had two bats of this one totaling 2.3 ounces so it was really easy to figure out how much I wanted per ply because I just needed one bat per ply so what I do is I tear it into these long strips like this and then I kind of draft it out just a little bit to make sure any little flyaways that happen as you're pulling it apart are all smooth more or less down. They don't have to be that supportive of that as the fibers kind of go every direction and it makes a fluffier yarn. But what I do is I wrap it around two fingers for each strip that I have. And when I get to the end, I tuck that little end in between my two fingers and I pull it through. And it makes this little cupcake of squishy amazingness. So I end up just having these, these balls of amazing. Um, they look like food. I want to eat them.
And I think that's part of why I do it, is less about having fiber flying more around the room and more of being able to pick these up and just... If you can't squish fiber against your face, you're not doing it right. This is very, very soft and amazing and orgasmic. And go touch some Surrey alpaca. Um, most alpaca is actually a different kind of alpaca um, than Surrey. But when you get your hands on this stuff, I mean, you don't regret it. This bat in particular came from my favorite place to get Surrey alpaca. This is from Breezy Ridge Alpacas. They have an Etsy store, and I'm going to put the link down at the bottom. Um, because you should go get some. It's wonderful. And I'm not even being paid to say that. That's They're one of my favorite shops. Um, and they all come from her alpacas, which is even cool. I think if she starts getting Surrey from other places, then I might be talking about my butt. But usually she sends you a little picture with the alpaca that it came from, and a little sample of something extra that's cool and delicious and ends up with me buying even more of it. Um, but it's great stuff. So that's what I'm spinning right now. I'm actually spinning it as a lace weight because, again, I only have 2.3 ounces of it. And I didn't want to leave it as a single for this one. So what I'm doing is I'm spinning it as tiny as I can on a wheel. Um, I'm better at spinning tiny stuff on spindles, but this one's on a wheel. And that way, when I ply it twice, I'll still have a substantial length to make something pretty like this little shawlette or something nifty like that. Um, I am spinning something kind of on a spindle right now. I say kind of because I've been working on this one for over two years, probably more like two and a half. Um, I bought it right before my honeymoon, which was over two years ago. And part of what I decided to do with it was while I was actually on my honeymoon, um, I hiked part of the Appalachian Trail. Um, this tiny little section of it that was in the Smoky Mountains and I loved it and I want to go back but it turns out on a mountain in mid-November it's cold so I started working on this and that's what I'm doing on my Turkish spindle right here there's not very much on it because I finally finally got to the plying stage but it's really pretty um, I can't remember off the top of my head exactly what all is in this. I think it's alpaca, Paulworth, um, might have a little bit of nylon in it, just for that extra strength, which I think will be great when you're hiking around and you're snagging it on stuff, but you still want to be super warm and cozy. That's a great thing about alpaca is it's super warm and cozy, and so is wool. So it's pretty amazing, wonderful stuff, and I had such a blast spinning it. I actually recently contacted her. This came from Lazy Pie Farms, um, begging if she happened to have any more of it lying around from two years ago. She doesn't, but she also does custom that, so I might end up doing that later. Um, Y'all should too, because it's wonderful. I mean, she just has a knack for this. It comes through so beautiful, and spinning it, it just glides right out of the bat. It's amazing. And I have some pictures of the full bat before I spun it on my Ravelry page, which I'll link to too. Um, you should go look at it because if you're anything like me, you'll just start automatically drooling and need it. Uh, but you can't have it, haha. <laughs> so, the great thing about spinning on a Turkish is when I go to ply it, and I don't ply like a normal person, I ply in like whatever container I happen to have on hand, um, so that I don't have those balls flying all over the room. I don't know how normal people ply, but at the moment I'm plying in a, a pot and a bowl. There's one ball in each and then that keeps them from rolling around and picking up dirt and whatnot while I'm plying it. But yeah, the great thing about spinning on a Turkish spindle is when it comes off it's already in it's already in a ball. You just pop the spindle out of it and then you don't have to do anything extra to it. Um, I did end up having to ball the other ply though because I love this yarn and so does my cat who broke into the bedroom I keep my yarn and found it and he loves it as well and he loved it all over the bedroom so surprisingly it didn't come apart which is a testament to the strength of this yarn um, and the coziness as well that it actually didn't break at all while he was batting it around but it's good that I planned on doing something with this yarn and not selling it because some people not so happy about cat fur in their yarn. I understand that. Um, but yeah, so I had to reball that one. That was a pain in the butt. 
but it's done now and now I get to be in the joyous part of applying it. But it's kind of continuing to sit around just a little bit because I have so many other projects going. So I kind of pick it up and I apply a little bit at a time. Now it's probably not going to be finished anytime soon. But as soon as it is finished, I'm going to be knitting a cowl out of it. A big, wonderful, cozy cowl that will keep my face warm whenever the next time I get to go out and hike the AT is. So that's what I'm doing with that. It's all this spinning I'm really working on right now. Um, I do have a couple of other projects going. I am off and on working on knitting this scarf that my husband started years ago for me out of just plain old red heart. He started knitting it at one link and then it gradually got bigger and bigger. So it's going to be a very big, very squishy, very warm scarf. Um, but he wasn't going to be finishing it. He hasn't been working on it in ages and years, in fact. So I picked it up and I started working on it because I just needed some some knitting that just goes back and forth and isn't too complicated. But it's so wide that I had to transfer it to these circular needles. And normally I hate circular needles, but this project actually seems to be working for me. And he was doing it all knit. Um, so I've started to add kind of a pattern to my section just to kind of mix it up a little bit and keep from getting too bored with it. Plus, when he wants to pick it up again and then finish the end, we'll know this is the part husband worked on. This is the part I worked on. So, that's the plan. Um, but it does take forever because those rows are so very wide. Uh, so I just pick it up every now and then when I need something to do. So that's what's on the needles. And then I am actively working on two little crochet doilies that come from the same pattern. I got the pattern off of Ravelry. I'll put the link for that down there also. Um, but at first I was just looking for a basic doily pattern that I could expand upon and make into a dice bag because I am a big fat nerd and I have all of these dice laying around and I no longer have the pouches that they go in. So I made a pouch. It's got the little flower pattern on one and I haven't sewn the ends in yet. That's why it's still a work in progress. But I just added these extra rows on around the edge, decreased a little bit, what I'm going to do is run a little ribbon through around the edge and then have a little little dice pouch. It'll look nicer than that when I'm actually done with it. But I really liked the pattern. I mean, it worked up fast. It probably did this in about an hour, maybe two if you count, fussing over how to improvise the edges. I ended up doing this little bumpy pico, peacot, however you say it, edging on it. Um, just because I'm going to put the ribbon right underneath that, so I wanted something to kind of puff out the top from that. Um, so half pattern, half improvise, a little dice bag, it's going to be awesome. And then I liked that so much that I ended up making another one that's not the bag part, it's just the doily, because the doily itself is gorgeous. Um, and I'm working on that one for my mom. Don't do a whole lot of projects for other people anymore, but uh, that's all I have started on that one. We're getting there. But I've been doing it while I'm at work, so pick up, put down, pick up, put down. Um, this yarn is awesome. It is 70% bamboo, 30% cotton. It is a commercial yarn. Um, I only had this one little little ball of it. Um, I think I got it from Iowa, but I'm not real sure. It was either in Ames, Iowa, or it was in our local yard shop, but I can't remember which one. But it was just one of those spur of the moment. It's on clearance. Buy it now kind of things. So I'm really liking it. Um, and I'll include links for all of this stuff in the description. So if you're interested in any of this stuff, um, if you want to see more pictures of it on my project pages on Ravelry, I'll put those links down there too. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been up to. Um, I'll be back next Thursday, kind of update you on whatever new I've been working on. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Uh, tune in next Thursday for what's on the wheel, what's on the needles, what's on the hook, um, and I'll see you guys then. Bye.